Okay, well the cylinder head on the uh, general supply air compressor is pretty much the uh, the key component that makes this more than just an engine. Definitely not a homemade piece made by a company who, with a foundry who had it cast and machined and uh, embossed the name there, General Supply, Kansas City. Not even a, uh, you know, you couldn't even say that it's a modified Willie's head. It's a custom cast piece for General Supply. It's only two combustion chambers and then two ports for the valve cartridges. Got your uh, water for the uh, upper radiator hose connection, thermostats in here, connected with a pipe thread. And this here is the air outlet, uh, the compressed air outlet to the tank. And uh, here are the uh, two valve cartridges. This is what, what they look like when they're assembled. And I've got one all taken apart here, so I can explain it easier. Uh, this is the one that that uh, that failed. As a matter of fact, I shouldn't say failed, but the one where the screw loosened up and impacted the piston on a number three cylinder. So I've taken it all apart, clean it up, and uh, make sure that nothing's damaged in the cartridge cartridge itself. None of the components are damaged. But uh, I'll go through how that works right now. All right, well, we're going to talk about this uh, valve cartridge for the general supply air compressor. And there's one complete. What it is is two check valves um, in an assembly. Um, uh, one is the inlet check valve and one is the outlet check valve. Uh, it works a lot like any other air compressor. Um, these here, these are uh, hardened steel rings. These are the actual valves themselves. And uh, I'll reassemble the whole cartridge and show you how it all fits together. Start at the at the bottom with uh, this plate here, which faces the faces the piston as it goes up and down. There's a spring that holds up, well, it puts pressure on this uh, valve here, which seats right around here on this surface, closes off this port, and the, the seat is the brass around the perimeter. So. That fits there. And that's the first valve. You can see, oh, maybe I'll get closer there. The, uh, the spring holds the valve up against the uh, brass body here. And that's held in by the one screw, which threads into the body. Now, this is the one that failed, and uh, they have this this uh, retaining screw here that threads in the body, and there's a lock nut that goes on the on the, uh, on the back of that screw, which I guess it uh, didn't do its job, and it backed out, and it allowed the screw to back out. The lock nut goes back in here. So that's that. Now that won't be, that won't be loose, that'll be tight, but I just, I can't screw the screw in anymore by hand. And um, so then at this point we have to install the part for the unloader. Now what this um, little fork piece does 
is when the uh, when the compressor builds up to whatever its cutoff pressure is, and the governor slows the engine down, the governor also delivers air to a small piston, which acts on the top of this piece, and its little four fingers, their forks, push down on that check valve through these four holes in here. And that, that prevents the valve from uh, resealing and uh, just allows the, uh, the piston and the, the, uh, the engine to just stroke up and down and up and down uh, without building any pressure up. Almost like a uh, hit and miss engine. Where a, where a hit miss engine holds the exhaust valve open uh, with a, uh, a latch out mechanism, this works to hold the uh, intake valve open, which that's the intake valve, you could say, and uh, just doesn't let it build up any pressure that way or any compression. So that's that, and uh, now we'll do the outlet check valve. Which, uh, here's another body with a general supply part number on it. And that's got these uh, six little springs. Which fit these little pockets. And the outlet check valve, right here, seats on this surface, right around here. I guess it would be easier to put it on top of the springs first. You can see that it sits in, sits in, in this little channel. And that's all just held together by this little retaining ring, which is a piece of spring steel. I'm not going to put that on because that's a bugger to get on. But to, to uh, explain it, air from the uh, in inlet manifold flows in the top. When the piston's on its downstroke, oops, sorry, piston's on its downstroke, the lower check valve opens against the spring, air flows into the cylinder, when the piston's at bottom dead center, that check valve closes, the spring tension forces it closed, and when the piston's on the upstroke, the check valve, the upper check valve, is pushed up against those six little springs, and the air flows out around this gap right here. Now, Take a look inside the cylinder. Oh, and it's all retained by, by that cap there. Threads right into the top there. And there's a there's of course there's a copper gasket, another gasket up here, just so that the air is separated. And I'll show you inside the head where they are, where the reliefs are cut for the air passage. You can see right inside here is the outlet to this pipe here and the same over here. Sorry about that. There's the outlet. goes through up to the tank. The valve cartridge. This is number three. It sits right in there like that with the cap simple as that and um, let me go get the intake uh, manifold and I'll show you that real quick well, here's the intake manifold this is just for the uh, compressed air the two center cylinders so you have uh, your big uh, threaded in retainers there and the intake sets over top of them and uh, the pistons go down through here and through there, which act on the unloader. So, uh, that's 
it's a pretty slick setup. I have to say, these valves are nicely made. Now it's stuck in there. Um, all brass, except for the uh, the uh, hardened check valves. So it's a pretty neat setup.